Hello, hello, grade 12. Welcome back to the channel, Science Therapy, hosted by the one and only science therapist, Uabutiwa Sos Ukobela Wemet. And without any further ado, let's look at this question that we have here. So we have question six on chemical equilibrium. Uh, it says consider the balanced equation below for a hypothetical reaction that takes place in a sealed 2dm cube container so note that our volume is given and then uh, they saying it's taking place at a temperature of 300 kelvins now 6.1 it's saying define in the term chemical equilibrium so we're going to say 6.1 chemical equilibrium is when uh, the rate of the the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Right. And then uh, for two marks, we have our definition like that. So it's when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction and then 6.2 says the amount of each substance present in the equilibrium mixture at 300 kelvins is shown in the table below the temperature of the container is now increased to 350k when a new equilibrium is established it is found that 1.2 mole p is present in the container note that this uh, p here is for the reactant right so now we can see that if the reactants are the one that are increasing because p was 0 0.8 at the previous equilibrium now at the new established equilibrium it is now 1.2 mode so that means now the reverse reaction has been favored right so that means we will see uh, the reactant having to increase now that uh, they're asking 6.2.1 is the heat of the reaction enthalpy change positive or negative now number one we know that an increase in temperature always favors the endothermic reaction now if the reactants are increasing this is telling us that the reverse reaction is the endothermic reaction now if the reverse reaction is the endothermic reaction that means the forward reaction is exothermic remember our enthalpy change always represents a uh, the heat of reaction for our forward reaction right so if we are saying that the reverse reaction is favored and the reverse reaction is endothermic then that goes without saying that obviously our enthalpy change will have to be less than zero because the forward reaction then would have to be the exothermic reaction so we say it's because here forward reaction is exothermic right so, but then remember for a mark, we are only just supposed to say enthalpy changes less than zero. Then we get our one mark. Then 6.2.2, that's when we now explain, right? So let's explain according to our Lichardless principle, why we say enthalpy change is less than zero or negative. So the answer here is negative. Negative, right? Now, 6.2.2 let's uh, break down that so number one we say an increase in temperature because they increase from 300k to 350k so an increase in temperature an increase in temperature favors the endothermic reaction endothermic reaction and then therefore the reverse reaction the reverse reaction is favored since the reverse reaction we have concluded that it is the endothermic reaction so an increase in temperature favors the endothermic reaction the reverse reaction is favored uh, because we can see uh, there is an increase there is an increase in the number of moles of the reactant 
of the reactant P, right? So which means, therefore, the forward reaction is exothermic. So with our enthalpy less than zero. So that's how we explain number one. We say an increase in temperature favors the endothermic reaction. The reverse reaction is favored. There is an increase in the number of moles of the reactant, and therefore the forward reaction is exothermic. Right. So that's how you were supposed to put that. Now, when it comes to calculating the Kc, um, this is how you go about it. Now, uh, remember, we only have noted that the PQ and PQ here, these are not uh, true elements from your periodic table. So these are just unknowns, right? So it's a hypothetical reaction. So uh, guess, guess P, guess Q2, and then guess PQ, right? So they are not actual uh, guesses that we can spot from the periodic table. It's just unknowns, more like using your X and Y. And then here we have a uh, Q, and then one, and then two, right? So initially note one thing about this. Remember, this was moving from a previous equilibrium to a new equilibrium. It is not starting uh, from the initial point when uh, the products are, are equal to zero. It's starting from a particular equilibrium and then a new equilibrium is, is being established. So that means for the initial number of moles, we have to use uh, the number of moles that were accumulated at the previous equilibrium. Right. So that's one thing that you need to note about this question. You won't have zero and zero here because this is not starting initially, right, at the beginning, at the very beginning of the reaction. This is uh, when it is coming from a particular equilibrium and moving to a new established e e uh, equilibrium. So that's one thing that you needed to understand about this question. And then uh, we have our 0 0.8 here, our 0 0.8, and then we have 3.2. But then note the fact uh, that the reverse reaction now has been favored. So if the reverse reaction now has been favored, that means this changes this whole uh, scenario. Now, remember, I said when you are having reactants, uh, you need to use I minus C is equals to E. But then this is only if we are sure that the forward reaction is favored. So if forward reaction is favored, then we can use that. But if the reverse reaction is favored, then this changes because if the reverse reaction is favored, that means now the reactants would have to increase. So the reactants will now have to be represented by I plus C is equals to E. And then initially, if the product, uh, if the forward reaction is favored, the products are indicated as I plus C is equals to E. But then if the reverse reaction is the one that is favored, now we have I minus C is equals to E. So the reverse reaction being favored kind of changes that. It changes that whole uh, that whole equation. So now we are adding into the, re into the reactants, but we are subtracting from the product because favoring the reverse reaction means that we are now using up the product to form back the reactants. So, okay, when we read here, they say at the new equilibrium, it is found that 1.2 mole uh, is present in the contain. So for P, it's this one, right? And then here we have Q2, and then here we have PQ. So the ratios were two here, and then also the two here. Now at equilibrium, it is found that 1.2 mole of P is present. So we're going to put 1.2 here. But then obviously we understand that uh, to get 1.2 from 0 0.8, that's when you need to add by something. So we add by what? 0 0.4, right? Now that we have found uh, this on the change block, we know that the change block relates to our ratio. So if we got to find anything uh, on the change block, we need to use the ratios. Now, remember how do we do that? We simply say this number here, multiplied by that, then divided by this. So if we say 0 0.1, multiplied by 1, then divided by 2, right? So because the ratio is 2 is to 1, meaning that whatever a uh, number of moles that we have here, for this one, it needs to be half the number of moles. So that means here we will have plus 0 0.2. So we're still using plus because Q2 is also a reactant. But then note when we get here, the ratios are the same as 2 is to 2. So that means if we have 0 0.4 here, also here we must have 0 
But this time around, we need to subtract this 0 0.4 from 3.2 because now we are actually using up the product since we favor the reverse reaction. Now from here, we have 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2. That's going to give us 1. Then if we say 3.2 minus 0 0.4, that's going to give us 2.8. Now, to get the concentration, it's simple. We just go back to the statement and read what is the volume. Now, the volume is 2 dm cubed, meaning to get the concentration is the number of moles at equilibrium divided by the volume. So all these numbers here would have to be divided by this 2 here. So 1.2 divided by 2, that's going to give us 0 0.6 mole per dm cube. And then uh, the one divided by two, that's going to give us 0 0.5 mole per dm cube. Then 2.8 divided by two, that's a uh, 1.4 mole per dm cube. Now at this point, you can now calculate your Kc value because we calculate the Kc using uh, our concentrations, right? So to calculate Kc, Kc is equals to the concentration of uh, the product PQ, and then remember the ratio will be used as an exponent over the concentration of uh, Q2 multiplied by the concentration of P. But then P, remember, also has a ratio of 2, so that will be square like that. Now, when we substitute what is PQ, we find a 1.4, and then square that over um, for Q2, we can see it's 0 0.5. And then uh, for P, we get 0 0.6, but we need to square it. Now, when you punch all that into your calculator, uh, you get 10.89, right? So your KC is 10.89. Okay, and that's how you would have uh, calculated that for a total of eight marks right so note how i went about uh, answering that question so the only tricky part here was the fact that this time the reverse reaction was the one that is being favored so you need to understand from that we add on the reactant side but then we subtract from the product side so make sure that uh, you really put that into your mind okay so Let's proceed. We have 6.2.4. It says, how will the equilibrium constant calculated in question 6.2.3 be affected when the volume of the container is decreased at constant temperature? Choose from increases, decreases, or remains the same. Right. Now note, when it comes to the Kc value, the Kc value, we always say that the Kc value can only be affected by temperature so it can only be affected by changing the temperature by temperature so as much as uh, the temperature the concentration and the pressure can shift the equilibrium constant the kc value can only be changed by the temperature right so now they're saying when the volume of the container is decreased at constant temperature they're saying at constant temperature that means they're not doing anything to the temperature but then what are they doing they're simply just a uh, they're simply just decreasing the volume right which the volume does not do anything to the kc feed so our answer they supposed to be remains the same right so it remains the same and then our reason, that's our reason up there. So Kc value, Kc value can only be changed or affected by temperature. So that's it. So if they ever tell you they increase the concentration or decrease the concentration, what will it do to the Kc value? No effect the Kc value will remain the same. They decrease the pressure, they increase the volume, or they do anything. As long as that change is not temperature, then the Kc value will just remain the same. Okay, then uh, we have 6.3. It says more Q2, so more of this reactant here, is now added to the reaction mixture at constant temperature how will each of the following be affected choose from increases decreases or remain the same now they're asking if we are putting more of the q2 
putting more of the reactant, what will happen to the yield of PQ? Now, already from our notes, we know that uh, increasing the concentration. So according to our de Chatler's principle, we know that increasing the concentration of a reactant uh, will eventually increase the concentration of the products because that thing favors what? The forward reaction. So favors the forward reaction. So we know that if we increase the, the concentration of the reactant, then the forward reaction will be favored. And if the forward reaction is favored, then eventually the concentration of uh, the products will increase. And therefore, the yield of PQ being the product will uh, obviously have to increase. So our answer for 6.3.3 is increases due to these reasons above. Increasing the concentration of a reactant increases the concentration of the product eventually because it favors the forward reaction. Now, 6.3.2, it's saying what will happen to the number of moles of P? Note that. What will happen to the number of moles of P? So increasing, again, the concentration of the reactants, increasing the concentration of the reactants will have to favor the forward reaction. If the forward reaction is favored, then the products will have to increase. But what happens to the reactants? All the reactants will have to decrease, right? Because if you are adding more of the Q2, you are encouraging that there will be more collusions here. There will be more particles reacting. So that eats up on the number of moles of the reactant, right? So note that, note that. So in 6.3.2, we are supposed to say the number of moles of P being the reactant will have to do what? Decrease. So it decreases. Oh.